Good morning. I'm back again. I was here last year um, talking again about engineering information. And so I've, uh, I've taken a bit of that spin and put the automation piece to it. And uh, it's going to be interesting what we'll take a look at today. Um, so today we have a lot of advanced tools with engineering. We look at all the plant design with smart technology that we're going forward with, <clears throat> with our owner operators, EPCs, and solution providers, meaning our Mac and our Mac. We want to design and manage the entire design build process. But to do this, we need to create a robust strategy, an integrated strategy. Um, our automation suppliers today are, are now able to participate early, which is a big deal. Um, we want to make sure that we provide the right requirements for engineering and de-risk the automation scope. Um, and and so therefore, we create something to hand over to operations. This, in turn, enables the flow of information across the entire design and build while keeping our CAP and our OPEX connected. So what we want to do is utilize the right people, processes, and applied technologies within the industry to create a robust foundation for us. <coughs> Excuse me. And this, in, in turn, will generate good results for the business life cycle. So how we do that is we want to take the stage gate process. So um, what Dick was talking about earlier was he was saying that we have so many years to create and build something. And in my world, it takes seven years, it seems like. So what we do is we want to start a development, and we want to get the automation contractor involved at an earlier stage. So we want to bring them in at the select stage. And we want to move them through the seven-year process that it takes to design and build something. Um, what I found interesting <coughs> excuse me, is that we have a common estimate between 3 to 5% of the entire capital for that project is spent on automation. 1.5% of that is, is actually spent on the scope of the design for the automation study itself. So if you think about it, that's, we want to try to capitalize on that. So what we do is we want to provide a full integrated strategy with the MAC and the MEC, the EPC and the owner operator together early on. So we're talking before we hit gate two. And in turn, that'll actually have a huge impact on cost, time, and money. <clears throat> so we want to, have, we want to take a, a different approach to this. So it's no longer business as usual. We have resource shortages, <coughs> shortages, pardon me, longer project schedules and higher costs. So we can't afford to have poorly implemented systems anymore. Um, this actually does impact construction and commissioning, which allows unacceptable quality of information that we end up coming with. And we see trends in silos and things like that. So what we want to do is, and, and as Dick was saying, this is not only about greenfield projects, but this ends up impacting brownfield as well. So we have issues today with automation when it comes to my world, which is information management systems and technology. The handover of documents and data from capital project phases to operations is insufficient. Even right now, I'm, I'm going through something where uh, the EPC hands over everything from the project, and I'm missing huge amounts of data. And that actually impacts startup eventually as well, and it, and it impacts as building. Um, the most of the information we have is handed over, you know, a lot of times at the end of the project as well. There's a lot of inconsistencies, and that actually impacts, uh, that has delays with startups as well. Um, how do we fix this? What I've started doing in the past probably 10 years on capital projects is I get with the, with the control, uh, contracts and procurement people, and I really look at the T's and C's within the strategy and the contract itself. And then in, that, in turn with that, we look at sustainable handover for operations as well. Um, so what, is, what do we contribute to the projects? So I'm not going to go through all of this list because it's pretty heavy. But at the end of the day, in Alberta and in Canada, we have to be compliant with the provincial legislation, with Canadian regulations. Um, and, and that actually, in turn, gives us, as you can see in the second point, continue license to operate, which is pretty important in our world. 
Um, we want to manage our information better. We want to standardize our documents and data. We want to deal with our vendor control processes. And that will actually help us with a hopefully a flawless commissioning and startup and higher quality. Um, and again, as I said earlier, that makes a huge difference when we talk about as building. Our data requirements and the life cycle of what we have to do, what we in turn eventually to run everything within automation and run the plant all comes down to actually how we manage our data when we're designing it within the facility. We have a data control function um, that pertains to operational systems right from the start to the end of the life cycle of the project, which goes on to operations. Um, one of the interesting things that I've started looking at myself is creating an engineering data warehouse and making sure that the tagging philosophy that we use aligns with the document numbering and how all that works within itself, within the project. So when we hand over to operations, we can go into a clean portal and it makes sense for, for the operators. <clears throat> So um, this is the way I see the world when it comes to automation and integration. The, so what we used to do traditionally is the EPC would basically run everything. And what we were finding is that the EPC can only do so much. They're, they can only handle so many of the disciplines, which really doesn't contain what automation really is about. So what we've started doing, or what I've started doing on, on big, big projects, is I have the EPC with the owner work together with the main electrical contractor and your main automation contractor. And they literally have to be in parallel with each other within this domain. And the circle that you see in the center is actually our huge repository and where we actually collect all the information and all the data and how it flows. Then outside of that, we have various companies or subject matter experts. For example, if I want to go to Siemens and buy three cogens, I'm going to deal with them as a different kind of subject matter expert. They're going to feed into our domain with the three of us holding hands inside. Um, and again, if I go to Veolia to buy a water treatment plant, that it'll be the same thing. And we tie all the information and integration that way. And eventually, and so we call this a task force model because we want to make sure that we deliver high value return throughout the project for the owner's investment. So what does that look like? If you have your owner operator, your EPC, and your Mac and your Mac all together, we, we create a solid integration that we can implement the strategy and ensure that the asset begins with engineering, getting the information to the right people at the right place at the right time. And I think a lot of, I hate to say this, oil and gas companies are not there yet. I think they're almost there, but they have issues trying to get there. Um, so what we want to do going forward is implement a core suite, like you can see on the right, of integrated and configured engineering applications. There are some people already there, larger oil companies that have a cloud environment, or they're starting to push that out to the EPCs. And what it is, is it's getting everybody to use the same tools, the same design specs, the same data, applications, all of it. And they're pushing and pulling in and out of this environment. And I know when you talk about the cloud with a lot of companies, there's still a lot of fear out there because it's the fear of unknown. If I throw something in the cloud, what does that mean? Where's it going? Is, you know, and then you look at cybersecurity and you look at uh, proprietary data. So there's a lot of questioning around that. Um, but at the end of the day, we want to deliver an end-to-end -end solution with integrated web-based tool delivery and hosting and support. Um, and we get all the parties involved sooner. That's, all, that's within the capital projects. And then, of course, as everybody knows, when we start these capital projects, we're already starting to do brownfield work. We get the plant up and running. Process is already making changes. The operations team already wants MOCs to happen. How do we make sure that all works in this environment? Um, so going back to the automation spe space of this, what, what's our issues that we're having today in general, whether it's greenfield or brownfield? So um, like Kevin said, we're businesses are running with really old systems, 20, 30 years old. Uh, 
we, we look at the DCS, for example, as a commodity. Um, therefore, we don't want to touch anything. We want to just keep it running. So how does that impact our brownfield work? Um, end users are looking for integrated architecture for process safety and automation to take their plants to the next level and make sure they have the life cycle costs um, that have a benefit to their organization. Um, one of the things that I'm pretty excited about when I, the last project I was doing with LNG is we were starting to look definitely to use intelligent IO and electronic marshalling. Um, your capex is a little higher, but this plug and play at the end of the day has a huge cost savings and it has a huge uh, impact on OPEX as well. Um, so again, the automation lifecycle management is becoming a reality for a lot of oil and gas companies. And what does that look like for our suppliers? We're looking at more sophistication in the industry, um, but it's the supplier who actually provides the cradle to grave solution. And of course they want to stay ahead of their competitors as well. Um, so when we look at, from a when a corporate level, we take this to the next level, it's imperative that we create projects that we don't just build the asset, we don't just build an asset, we want to deliver something right from a device level all the way up to the corporate entity. And in, in my world with information and technology, this is something that we, we struggle with. You know, we, we siloize, we, the folks in the field are doing what they need to do, but what does that mean getting it over that corporate bridge and, and making the difference to show the head office um, value for what we're doing or what we're not doing. So this is what we want to do. We want to hopefully create an integrated, con complete automation control and electrical system. Take a systematic approach with our plant assets and be able to work in remote locations, for example, rather than just everything run to fail. Um, you, when you look at inspections, we could have a better plant inspection on the brownfield side after we get going and how often this takes place. Um, again, you could look at spatial data differently when it comes to your uh, inspection points and how you're going to actually manage your, your work packages. Um, this is a well pad that I we were designing on a different project. Uh, what I, what I wanted to point out here was that automation going forward, this, this was a greenfield project actually, we, we really looked hard at automation when it came to the modularization of, of an actual well. This particular well has 45 slots, so it's quite large. Um, but what we wanted to do is how could we manage automation on a capital project using a three-dimensional design with modeling and how that will impact the future of operations. We want to take advantage of that for operational excellence. Um, one of the things we did is we utilized our 3D model. And I, I know a lot of operations, they don't want to update the model. They want to just shelve it. The project shelves it. They move on. They can't seem to find the money to keep it going. But if we could, we could actually, um, it, we could actually have some great benefits to it. There are some adverse effects that can happen, obviously, with, with delay in startups issues with the cost of keeping it going. But good modularization within automation, for example, like Delta V, could further decrease capital costs later. Again, going back to tag-based data integration allows, again, you can do your fat testing sooner, um, and it can actually eliminate a lot of the risk and complexity of your modularization. So um, I get asked this question a lot. And I use this term a lot. I call it the source of truth. So in my world, if the data is not real and the source, isn't, the source of truth is not right or accurate, it presents a lot of problems. So this is a question, for example, that I get from a higher level of safety. What other pain do owner operators struggle with that can be solved with automation, with good data, good process, and good project objectives when we're looking at Greenfield? And what does that mean for our field, field design? Essentially, I, I see it as four areas. Safety, obviously, is the first one. Real-time information, reduce of risk. And we create a lot of um, great asset integrity for operations. 
quality and re reliability of information, reduce and rework and revalidation of what we have. We actually target a 30% reduction in rework between phases. We have reliable information, which is replicable. Uh, our economics, um, we can target uh, reduction in engineering and rework with phases. Uh, well pads are a good example. And then the use of information, consistent tools, process driven, easy to find information um, that, and again, a commitment from individuals on the project to make that happen. Our source of truth can also stem out to the business at a high level. I'm not going to go into detail. Um, the picture on the right is the world that I, this is the world that I focus in. This is how I function. From my data, my data engineering warehouse, my documentation, the portal, how I handle my EPCs, and then everything from SAP integration, my HISIS data, all of that, what that really looks like. Um, but this is just, I just wanted to point out all the, the other facets of making things a source of truth. We're dealing with four and five dimensional integration points on capital projects today. We have different operational needs when it comes to projects and data, and then what we're doing with Smartfield. Of course, we got, can't always forget about IT. We were talking about, I've heard a lot about IT in the last couple of days and you know this push and pull and that sort of thing, but at the end of the day, we need somebody to lay down our fiber and we need somebody to hook everything up. So it's to create that backbone structure is pretty important. Obviously our health and safety is, is something we look at when it comes to monitoring and making sure that we have all our HSE files filed accordingly. Uh, our interface management is another piece that's that one stop focal point, the interface between sub projects, what that looks like from an information management world, from the I am a T lead perspective, uh, from finance, how we use SAP. Um, I think SAP is another, uh, finance is another area that we need to look at earlier in the data warehouse because what we, what we do when we create the tagging philosophy, for example, in a capital project, we eventually use in the SAP world as well as a functional location. So there's our, our, whole, our handshake as well. Um, our field applications, we want to be lean. Our licenses across all of our access points. Um, and then our performance when it comes to operational uh, data, for example, that we're using. So our operational goals for a project in this world to create something better for, for automation. We're, again, we're, we're running these facilities. It takes us seven years to build it, and we're gonna run it for 40. So how can we create something that's gonna be improved, self-improved, robust, and integrated? Um, I won't go through all the points, but you can see we have interfaces with custody of transfer, alarm management. Um, that's another one we're starting to do earlier on, is our alarm management process and our strategy. And we use, we, again, we start that at, at the select phase, and it has a huge impact later on when it comes to uh, as building and, and getting the RFO. Um, we look at process data, safety, automation procedures, uh, recommended spare parts management. These are all operational goals that we try to hit while we're in this phase. Um, the last point I just wanted to bring up I, w I asked Dick, I wasn't sure, I didn't want to sell ARC <laughs> while I was here, but um, we, on the last LNG project I was on, we actually, I, I, needed, I needed the company to understand what automation really meant. If we were gonna look at a new DCS system, what did that really need, what, what did we need that added value for this new facility, and what did it mean to the organization? And the previous oil facility that I'd helped design, it took us a year and a half to decide what DCS we were gonna go with. So I didn't have the money, I didn't have the time. So one of the gentlemen I was working with, he came to me, he says, you know, I found this, this great company and they have this package called the STAR such and such, and he's going on, the solution package to help us get through the, the criteria of how we're gonna choose the right DCS for the, for the greenfield plant we we're looking at, build, that we were gonna build. So again, I didn't have very much time. I had maybe six months to get this done. Um, 
So I convinced my management to give me some money, which was great. So they did that. I got the owner operator together, which was us, the IT automation business analysts, my EPC IT, their, autom their automation team, my operations manager, metering specialists, anybody I could get. We, we created a steering committee, took this solution package, and started looking at what this really meant before we even cut an RFI. So we went through and we eventually had started with six companies. We went through the business objectives, uh, what kind of criteria we were looking for, how we were going to weight it. And eventually we came to, to the point where we were actually ready to send the RFI packages out. We came down to three, three uh, automation contractors that we could go with that made sense for this facility. And, you know, it really, when you really dissect something and, and take, you know, different slices of it, it's, it's amazing what you can find, what you see, and what you're actually wanting to, to go out and buy. You know, you're going to go out and spend $50 million or $250 million. It has to be meaningful back to the business as well. So that's where we ended up. So ARC worked with us. They brought in some folks. We did four one-week training sessions in Calgary, and it was amazing what I, what I learned from this, and, and a lot of our operations folks as well. So what we ended up waiting was our SCADA, PLC, DCS, SIS, Historian, Asset Management, and our MAC. And at the end of the day, it was a non-biased third-party third selection of what we were going we to end up coming up with. And this helped streamline the process. And it, it, and it actually worked out quite well. Um, so as you can see on the bottom, we started with six companies. As part of the questionnaires for hardware, software, and the process support, we rated them uh, with, the, with the RFI process, and then we're ready to go. The downside of this was not this, but we ended up selling the plant and selling all the assets. So all this work we did was more of a learning curve for us. But our peer next door found out about this, and they said, you know what? We're going to go do that, because what you've learned what you actually took from this, the, the entire industry is saying, you know what, that's a, that's a smart idea. If we're going to make that kind of investment, we want to know what we're doing is right. So automation, we've got four levels, obviously. Process control, assets, ma asset management, maintenance, and corporate accounting. The key success, again, is to engage your MAC, your MAC, your EPC, work in parallel, choose the right intelligent applications, and integrate them properly with your technology. Create a strong automation strategy, and put it into the, into the play early on. So out of seven years, you should be using it by two and work together to create and implement a system that's gonna be engineered to support all your informed decisions that you're making on the, uh, <clears throat> during the project. Um, and again, utilize the, a, a, approach, a proactive approach to the project process and drive improved operability. At the end of the day, when I go to work every day, my, my client is operations. Everything I do is for them. And I want to make sure that I give them the strongest economic return that I can. So what do we want? We want lower costs and higher return for our investment. Thank you.